the two or TUS Gaelic rounds hosts a second ever Galway versus Tipperary All Ireland quarter final, and it's going to be refereed today by John Keenan from Ockram in Wicklow. It's Tipperary who won the toss. They're going to play from right to left in the first half. Off they go. Mist has lifted a little bit, but there's a threat that it'll come back again pretty soon as Conor Stakelham goes across there, loses it. Pressure is on immediately here, this time from Evan Nyland of Galway, looking to make a bright start. Two players across there to receive it. One of them is Joseph Cooney. Back it goes towards Roman Glennon. Glennon outside the opposing 65-metre line in towards Sean Lennon. Three Tipperary players around him. The pass out there towards Keonon Fahey had to work to keep it in play initially. Now eyeing the target, trying to get past his man. That's not easy with Brian O'Mara over there. Back it comes to Glennon once again. Falls down. Galway hold on to possession, however, just about. Keonon Fahey losing it. But they try to regain it in the middle of the park once more. Ferocious start. That's Lennon once again hammering it forward there. Out over the sideline, line ball to uh, Tiferary. Yeah, ferocious start, Jordan, there's no doubt about it. Uh, Whelan initially came to right half forward, so Dan McCormack picked him up, um, and he's he's the man they're happy enough to have on him at the moment, so it'll be interesting to see if he does drift inside, will that be swapped off to Kyle Barrett? It's going to be uh, Ronan Maher who will take this line ball. Crowd of around 35,000 here in Limerick today at these two quarter-final matches. That didn't produce anything for Tiferary. It's mopped up at the back by Porik Mannion, and they're able to get back into the attack with his brother Cahill launching it downfield, all the way down there towards Kevin Cooney. Session there holding off the challenge of Cahill Barrett back into the middle. It comes, lost there by Brian Concanon. One back by Tiferary once again, and the ever reliable Ronan Maher starting as he means to finish in this game. Very dominant. Well, they'd be disappointed, Galway, it was a great chance, it was, it, it was a brilliant takedown and ball across from Kevin Cooney, but uh, not taken any stride by Brian Cannon because there was a chance of a goal on if he got it first time. Jason Ford has come to take this free, he's inside his own 45-metre line, the breeze is sweeping across the field today, and he hits this one well on its way, nicely over the crossbar, good start by Jason Ford, playing in his 43rd ever championship match. Massive strike, too. that's why they want him back, isn't it? <laughs> he just brings you all those traits as well as being a great player from there. Leona Murphy with his first puck out. Across here as far as Darren Morrissey. Goalkeeper able to receive it again. Down into space, Ronan Maher is covering back there, but so too is Owen Connolly. Connolly getting there ahead of Kevin Cooney. Stuffing it down towards Alan Tiden. One back by Galway. Joseph Cooney trying to win it, trying to hold on to it, but they very forceful. Alan Tynan came in with the challenge. Yeah, tough, tough hit by Alan Tynan and, and, and deservedly getting his free, but Cooney back on his feet straight away, no complaining, and uh, up and at it again, and, and just delighted to get the free. And the end result here, anyway, is going to be uh, a free, which will be taken over there by Evan Nyland, Claren Bridge player. And we got uh, 12 points in the Leinster final. Eight of those were from Freeze. How will that defeat so late on in that game impact on Galway's performance here? Have they put it behind them? Nalid looking for a good start. That's uh, got over the crossbar. Fine point. Yeah, I was watching him practice in a few of them uh, below there when we were doing the interview on the pitch. Sure, uh, he was absolutely dead eye deep with him. So two points early on from the two free takers. They're certainly in form. That's Gahlmanian back collecting it. Leaving it off once again here. Driven forward by his brother Porik into the centre towards Kianon. Fahey back in the starting 15 once again. Got a crash through the temporary defence stop by Ronan Maher. Launching an attack down there. Caldon's after it. Should be the goalkeepers. Eana Murphy has a free man out of the uh, wing here. And it's Gahlmanian once again. Did really well in the Leinster final, swinging it across towards Joseph Cooney, caught it well. Dropped down towards Brian Concanon, Concanon swinging it over his right shoulder. Will it make it? Just dropped short. Reese Shelley able to gather it in, the UL student. Big long one down once again. Collected here by Darren Morrissey, the quarterback, neat and tidy. Back out to Cahill Mannion, bouncing it on the stick before the challenge comes in from Tynan. Flicking it outside, and this is uh, Ronan, Ma Ronan Glennon. And Glennon's shot is a very good one. First point of the match to come from open play, and it comes from the man who got the call to start here, Ronan Glennon. 
yeah, an interesting look. Uh, Jer Cahill Mannion has been afforded an awful lot of space around the half-back line. No one really picking him up. He's like playing as if he's the, the seventh defender, and he will hurt you with that sort of ball. That clearance out of defence there was uh, intended for Jake Morris. And they'll be hoping to get Morris and Kyo into the game as quickly as possible, not to mention Seamus Callan in that inside forward line. You'd have thought the tactic from Tiferary today may have to bomb it down there into that Galway full back line and see what happens. Yeah, they've been good so far now. They've, Darren Morrissey has come out with the ball, Jack Grealish has come out with the ball, so it's a good start for them at least. Cahalman, you're ready to hit this one, taking his time over it, looking for somebody to make runs for him out of picture. Low and hard at the end of that, a disappointing one. Maybe he was in two minds, not sure. Anyway, nine ball now to, to Ferreri. Chance to put the pressure back on the Galway defence. Our linesman today, by the way, Colm Lyons and uh, Sean Stack. Sean Stack on this near side. And the line ball to be taken by Roland Maher. Ronan, whose last quarter-final was uh, in Cork against Waterford two years ago. A match in which he scored three points, but the uh, team still lost. That's a big one downfield, down towards Calden. Looking to try and squeeze it forward there, but stopped by Sean Lenan. And Lenan comes out with it, does a little jig as he gets the call, gets the decision. The referee saw that he was being fouled, taking it out that time. Yeah, nice bit of niggle all over the field, George. There's, uh, there's plenty of little individual tussles going on, and lads not allowing each each other's uh, direct opponent make the runs, and a bit of bunching in the middle with the kind of bunch and break attitude. And it's Anna Murphy, the goalkeeper, is taking this from his own 45 metre line. Scored in Croke Park a few weeks ago against Dublin. Deep intake of breath. He's given it lots and lots as he got the direction, drops short. Ronan Maher trying to get that ball out. Whelan's in there showing a lot of interest. Again, it's Ronan Maher, so influential. Oh, that's a short one intercepted there by Galway, by Joseph Cooney initially. And then Brian Cannon. God, and Brian Cannon thinks it's over the bar. Yeah, Hasn't be, been given. It'll be interesting to see the Sean Stack say anything. I think he's agreeing, agreeing that it, it may have been a point. We'll see with does John Keenan. We don't have Hawkeye here, obviously, but it looked from this angle like it was a point. Well, he was absolutely certain that it was. Anyway, it still says, says with uh, Galway in front still by two points to one. And Rhys Shelley is going to restart. Got his chance to start in the championship a few weeks ago against Limerick. Did well in that. Running repair has been carried out by Ronan Maher. Tying up his bootlaces just in front of him. Ronan operating at full back in a switch with Michael Breen. From that puck out, Dohi Burke trying to get it away, but collected there well by Jason Ford. Helped out here by Noel McGrath, the team captain, back in as far as Michael Breen. Used to play midfield, of course. And Breen now trying his luck from about 50 metres out. Yes. Very good shot. Equaliser comes from Michael Breen. Yeah, the first bit of influence we've seen from Noel McGrath as well. He, he doesn't get onto that ball yet, but first ball onto sees, sees Breen is loose. Great score. Well, he scored five points in two previous uh, matches in uh, against Galway in the championship in his uh, midfield days. Very, very, very pleased with that. Free to Galway, and it'll be Evan Nyland who will hit this one. This is, uh, let me see, about 85 metres or thereabouts from his target. Again, very well hit. Flawless. Two from two for Evan Nyland. And Galway shoot back into the lead again by three points to two. Fantastic puck of the ball, George. You know, as soon as he left his stick, we looked it over. Ronan Maher then, all the way down. Short towards Seamus Kennedy this time. Three Galway players are there. Comes back towards Alan Tyden. He's been strong, he's been powerful this year. Very important addition to the team, but that pass intended for Mark Kyo was well caught by Darren Morrissey. Really good piece of defending. He did very well, Darren Morrissey, but Mark Kyo would say it'd be bemoaning a bit. The pass might have been slightly behind him, but if it was to hand, uh, 
he was in on a good chance of getting a run of goal. It'll be Porik Mannion who will hit this back to his goalkeeper. Mannion at full back right now with Garrod McInerney out there at left corner back, at least for the moment. Collected by Noel McGrath in the middle of the park, easing the shot into this one. It's just going to the right. And that is the uh, first wide by Tipperary in this game. Quick puck out across here. Gathered in well by Ronan Glennon. Setting up the next scoring opportunity. Kevin Cooney going across, skips past him. Michael Breen going back, taking it with difficulty under pressure from Cooney. Back in it comes towards Ronan Maher again. Saw the challenge about to be presented by Kianam Fahi and then dodged away from that. Got it out into the centre. Helped out here by Jake Morris. Firing it forward for Owen Connolly to get there ahead of Sean Linan. Moving it down smartly, down towards Jake Morris. And the uh, line ball over there is going to be to Tipperary. Cornerback Jack Grealish busy. Liam Cahill calling out the instructions. Tipperary, of course, hoping to get back into an All-Ireland semi-final for the first time in four years. Line ball to be taken by Jason Ford. He's already got one point in the game from a very long-range free. Flies in there. Mannion trying to get to it. Boric Mannion moving it forward quickly. Helped out there by Darren Morrissey. And then it's Garrod McInerney. Down towards Keanon Fahey. Swinging the stick to it, but not making the contact. Tipperary's line ball. Brad O'Mara wants to take it quickly, does so. It reaches Alan Tynan. Tynan looks at the target, hits it beautifully. Lovely score. Tynan's first. Team's level again, level for the third time. Yeah, Joe wanted to find it a season, and uh, how good has he scored and proficiency rate been all year? Like, I mean, his level of... of, of uh, White flag raised to shots, I'd say it's very, very high. He doesn't need any space and it's really playing with confidence. Man of the match in the game against Cork down at Fork Equive some weeks ago. Into the hands here of Kianon Fahey from that puck out. Keeps it away from the challenge. Felt confident hitting that one, but uh, it drifts and it's gone to the left. Second miss by a Galway player. Rhys Shelley was part of the it's given cup winning squad for UL along with uh, Brian O'Mara in the middle of the field right now it is Sean Linan helped out here by Brian Concanon the final shot is by Joseph Cooney looking at his handiwork from outside the 65 meter line and well he might it's a beauty Joseph Cooney yeah, had a massive shooting day against Dublin when, when they made the comeback and just didn't fire for him in the Leinster final but that was a great score battle over here involving Jason Ford and Dohi Burke. And Ford got the shot, but... Uh, He's gone out, he stepped out there, yeah. Yep. Now been on the far side, quick to spot that. But he is so important, Jason Ford, uh, so critically important to their forward line. They are such a, a much more slick outfit when he is part of that. Line ball over there will be uh, taken in just a moment by Cahill Mannion. Played really well in the game against Kilkenny in the Leinster final just two weeks ago. Hugely enjoyable contest that afternoon. That's knocked down in the middle of the park. Onto it quickly, here comes Michael Breen reveling in the freedom. He's got to get Noel McGrath picked up the pieces then, but couldn't steer it over the crossbar. And that's Tiff's second wide. Yeah, and I tell Liam Cahill be a little bit disappointed with the return so far, Gerard. They've created a nice bit. Doesn't look to be a massive threat yet from inside, but of course they'll only take one ball. Still sorting one another out in this match, I think. Here's Dan McCormack, kept the ball in play, even though he's shouldered well. Gave it to Brian O'Mara, left-sided away, down towards Seamus Calden. Trying to win the duel over there with Garroyd McInerney. McInerney battling strongly, holding on. He was being fouled anyway. Free out, that'll be a very tasty duel there. Seamus Calden, who scored his 40th championship goal in the match last weekend. Goalkeeper out there, Anna Murphy to belt it away downfield, down towards Conor Whelan, who hasn't really got into the match so far, being tightly marked. Over it comes towards Noel McGrath, beautifully inside to Dan McCormack from Boris Lee. Drops short, collected here by Anna Murphy again, looks up quickly to see just who's on, who's available. 
McInerney had Joseph Cooney to his left, goes long instead, down towards Whelan this time, trying to win the race, but who gets there first? It's Cahill Barrett. Then it's Noel McGrath. McGrath steadies himself inside his own 65-metre line before striking it and striking it to the right. That's another one that's gone astray. Yeah, they will be just concerned a little bit, like you back Noel to score every time. Superb defensive d display by Barrett there. No Hurley, I think Whelan might have had the Hurley, but he still came away with the ball. Uh, but Noel, yeah, just needs to get the radar in. Anna Murphy has the opportunity of going short again to... Darren Morrissey to prepare to surrender that talk out. Force Galway to work it downfield. And then Tip able to mop it up at the back here. They have plenty of players back. And Barrett is able to launch the next one. Down it goes there towards Marquio. But again, the extra Galway men back in defence, making sure that nothing comes of that immediately. Kept back in play again here. Nice ball won there by. Jake Morris, and as it was given to Dan McCormick, the referee had blown his whistle. Might have been an advantage. And just a little trip by Jack Grealish as he was about to turn and get away to pass, I think. That's the call to John Keenan, I think, anyway, yeah. And then, a good bit of aimless ball being poked up and down the field from both sides. Uh, Ger, both kind of defensively set up. Uh, a lot of bunching and a crowd were playing in the middle of the field, but the ball into both sets of forwards needs to be better. It's almost as if they each have extra players back. Jason Ford's going to hit this. And that's not his best. That's a fourth wide by Tipperary. They trail Galway by four points to three. Match yet to catch fire. This time it is Conor Stakelham coming across winning this one. Getting by the first challenge, which was a little clumsy by Brian from Cannon. And a free once again, so these stoppages now for frees, upsetting the fluency of the game. Yeah, and that's just a silly one by Branko Cannon, really, because you know, Ford, OK, I put the hex on him now, but he won't keep missing, like, you know, so giving him free pucks from back around here is, is, is silly, because there was nothing on, really, for Galway there. Well, he scored from this dis distance uh, earlier on in the match. So Jason Ford has had plenty of practice. And that one has gone over. Nicely done. After a couple of misses, it's level for the fourth time. Oh Anna Murphy, uh, second time playing against Tipperary in the championship for Galway. And he spots Freeman out on the left hand side, and that is Darren Morrissey. He's gone left back again. Garrod McInerney gone back into full back, picking up uh, Calder the whole time. Here's a chance. Kevin Cooney, and that one has gone wide. Oh, after a beautiful bit of skill, uh, Gerard Lee flicked the ball to the hand, uh, just didn't finish, you wouldn't expect him to miss him there. Puck out quickly taken, well read, a very, very alert Lenan that time, making sure it doesn't come to anything immediately, but it might here. Seamus Kennedy, three Galway players are after him, has a support player, but in behind Seamus Calnan, he might have as well have kept going. Yeah, he could have had a shot off, off of his left there. Terry in plenty of space, maybe not as confident as a forward, you know, as it, a lot of traditional forwards. He'd be better known as a half-back, and he'd kind of a utility player now for them. Very effective one at that, but, uh, yeah, that was just a pass that Jamie hadn't read, or vice versa. Lovely pick-up there while we were watching uh, Kevin Cooney a moment ago. That goes long again, down to the aforementioned Cooney. Here he is, younger brother of Joseph taking on Michael Breen, Breen tried to hold him out but the referee says using unfair tactics and the end result is going to be a free from the 20 metre line. Yeah, it, it appears to be the tactic or whether it was a free or not now it, it's you know the grappling in it all right but to isolate him one on one whether it be on Owen Connolly or Michael Breen and there's so much switching up going on there is a bit of confusion in there and he is hurling well at the moment he's playing with real confidence Kevin Cooney. 19 minutes gone so far, the team's sharing eight points. Evan Island with two of those from Freeze. Angle tricky, but uh, not for Evan Nyland. Galway go back in front again. Real cat and mouse game hasn't really opened up to any great oh, extent. Real yet. tension in the air, an awful lot to lose, Gerald. You can, you can smell it up here. Reese Shelley's puck out into the middle. Noel McGrath got there, holds on determined 
kicks it out here as far as Seamus Kennedy. This time a better hand pass down into the hands of Jason Ford. And Ford hits it beautifully. Lovely completion to that move involving three players. Best score of the game, Joe, really. Noel bottled up, nothing to do. Had to kick it out to Kennedy. As you said, way better pass uh, on to Ford. Lovely finish. Again, De Pereri prepared to let go. We have the short puck out. Work it out of defence to Grealish. Out to Porik Mannion. And Porik Mannion diagonally across over here towards Cooney. Looking to win this one. Drops down there as far as Connor Whelan. And Whelan gets among the scores. And that might give him a little bit of confidence to get his game going here. Yeah, and again, it's that, you know, Porik Mannion much happier on the wing. Uh, brilliant crossfield ball. Cooney got a hand to it, didn't take a clean, but... Uh, who was the most alert to the break was Conor Whelan and uh, maybe things are starting to open up. One between them. Back there goes Joseph Cooney. Towards Ronan Glennon. Can't hold on to it, however. It's Conor Stakelev instead. Trying to get it forward there. Trying to get He does it at the second attempt as far as Alan Tynan. Tynan raiding. Here's an opportunity. There are support players. Tynan takes too many steps. Oh, and he's been told about it as well there, too. <laughs> what the goal of defence. Uh, he should have passed that one. There was two or three options, notably Jamie Cannon, you can see with his hand up. Mark Kyo also saying put it over the top. Uh, he decided to try and cut back out onto his left to make an angle for himself. Both the Galway lads defended very well. It's a glaring error, unfortunately, from a tip point of view. Now they try to win it again here. But over to get there first is Brian Concanon out over the sideline together with Conor Stakelum. Line ball is going to be to Tipperary. Well, we haven't had too many goal chances so far, but that was the creation of one there involving Alan Tynan. Perhaps a little lack of experience at this level. Yeah, probably not used to being in, 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 as close as he was either, Jerry. You know, we've seen off that of him coming out as a kind of a turbid fielder. He's playing close to goal at the moment, so maybe that's just where he found himself. Henry Shefflin there on the sideline. Watching Porig Mania. Slip it all the way back here. As far as uh, Cahill. And again, spotting the run of Kevin Cooney. Several times now he's got out ahead of his man and had an opportunity, and that's uh, a poor wide at the end of all of that. Yeah, there are real chances let, been let slip by, and that is the tactic. You can see it straight from the off. This one goes down here as far as Mark Kyo. Kyo, man of the match. In the game against Offaly with three goals in that game. Hammers it across towards Alan Tyne and trying to win the duel there with Gerard McInerney. And McInerney deemed to have pushed him in the back. Might have been an awful lot in it. Oh no, it wasn't Mac it wasn't Tyne, Tyne, it was Jason Ford. Anyway, the end result is going to be a free in. I, mean, I think he's bringing it in closer as well, uh, for a bit of descent on him. Uh, Ford did really well, to be fair. It was, uh, it wasn't really a forwards ball, but he fought it out and, and uh, held off the Galway lads and wins a vital free. And now he has this opportunity to level up the match with 23 minutes gone. He wasn't ever going to miss, was he? Six apiece, level for the fifth time here in the TUS Scaly Grounds in Limerick. This is the second of the All-Ireland quarter-finals. First one won by Clare. They will be playing uh, Kilkenny in the All-Ireland semi-final in two weeks' time. Henry Shefflin will be hoping that Galway will be there as well. Tip of other ideas. Here's Seamus Calden, raiding brilliantly. Burke's after him. Calden, well blocked down by GMAC. Goalkeeper able to get to it. Anna Murphy. Well, that was a dangerous moment. Real possibilities there for Tipperary. Great defending by Galway. And now in the counter-attack, it's up with Keanon Fahey held there. And the end result has got to be a free. Well, that was real danger. It was. It was, it was a loose puck out from Anna Murphy, and Cannon had come out a little bit deep. Uh, read it superbly, got it to himself, and took off. You now, maybe the legs aren't quite what they used to be, but great work by Dahi getting back, and as you said, uh, Gerard McInerney putting the body in the way, and Anna Murphy's glad to be able to pick up the pieces. So, following all of that, there's an opportunity now for Galway to retake the lead. Evan Nyland, their free taker, three points so far from the middle of the park. On a really nice evening, beautifully done. Such a good striker of the ball. Seven point to six. Nearly uh, 25 minutes are gone. 
clock out here. Touchdown by Sean Renan for Galway. That was a vital touch to give it to Joseph Cooney. Back into the middle of the field it comes again. Double Mannion feeding it forward. Here's Connor Whelan. Whelan blocked down this time. And his man, Cahill Barrett, able to get that ball away and deliver it very cleverly as far as Owen Connolly, the former under 20 and 21 full back. Connolly going forward, slipping it in there. Nicely done as far as Mark Kyo. Challenge there by Darren Morrissey. Looking for a support player. Not the greatest of passes. Gave the ball away to Evan Nyland, who in turn links up with Cahill Mannion. A return ball given back to Mannion again. Looks over his shoulder, then drives it forward here for Galway. Pressure on the goal in there, but that one has gone away to the left-hand side. And another opportunity missed, a fifth wide by Galway. That was a real let-off. It was a brilliant save by Rhys Shelley. Uh, for once, Kyle Barrett just misjudged it. Uh, Whelan was inside him. It was a narrow enough angle, but spread himself really well and covered off the angles. And uh, that's a let-off for Tip, but they'd be glad their goalie's sharp and ready for stuff like that. Anybody's match? Connolly now, Owen Connolly. And he has a go for a score as well, but uh, there were other options, really. There were players in the inside forward line dying for a decent pass to come their way. Ayanna Murphy about to tuck it out. Batted back down by Noel McGrath. Conor Stakelin trying to get there, but Kohlmanian is so assured. Likewise, Joseph Cooney. And that one has gone to the left again. Series of errors. Yeah, it's a kind of a shooting fest from the middle, really, Durant. It's not the easiest on the eye, to be honest with you, but nobody cares if they get over the line, but that's sort of the way they're playing it. They're willing to take on long shots. They're not going over at the moment. Dan McCormack, he's going to have a go as well. Dan with the umpires going back to have a look, and Dan has missed also. Doesn't score an awful lot, Dan McCormack. Did get uh, appointed an All-Ireland final back in uh, 2016. Back to the goalkeeper, it comes again. A little bit of pressure on him from Jason Ford. More pressure now on Darren Morrissey as he got that one out. It's a little bit too short, far too short. Mm, complete mix-up there by the Galway defenders, and in the end, fortunate that uh, Jake Morris wasn't able to make more of it, and Cahill Mannion able to get it away. Down into the corner once again towards Whelan. Connor Whelan's got past Barrett. He's got a man to play to. He never looked up, however. And in came the covering defence, Michael Breen. Here's Whelan again now, taken down. And the referee is that. Uh, what's his call going to be, I wonder? He's given a free injury, yeah. Tip backs are incensed. It was another goal chance. You know, he's he's using his, uh, his physique to hold off Kyle Barrett there in those 50 50s. Uh, didn't really see the follow up while it was a free for, but they weren't too happy. That was Michael Breen coming across there with Barrett, helping them out. It was a jersey tug, yeah. Slight, slight. Very. Yeah, but but uh, I suppose technically, yeah, but he, the miscontrol there that really cost him. And it, it was just there. Carl Barrett just caught him by the jersey, just over his tugs. And I think that's sharp, sharp from John Keenan, to be fair. And he had Kevin Cooney, I think, just inside, waiting for the ball, had it come his way. Well, they look threatening up there, though, at the moment, the two of them. They look like if they get good quality stuff in front of them instead of some of the mad shooting, they could do damage. It's seven points to six in Galway's favour, and the mad shooting you talk about, there have been 12 wide so far, shared equally six apiece, and all of them from long-range stuff from the middle third, really. And as you suggest, Anthony, when the ball does go into the inside forwards, there are... There are goals there for the taking, you would you, you, You'd imagine. say that Jake Morris and Mark Kyo and Shaney must be very frustrated as well. Like They're not getting in you know, quality ball. With 28 minutes, 51, with tip on six points. Like you will know that that won't be good enough to beat the Scalva side. Well, if you look at the two inside forward lines that started so far, only one player has scored a point from open play, and that is Conor Whelan. Nothing from Kevin Cooney. Uh, Nyland has been scoring from freeze, nothing from the tip inside forward line. Maybe it'll change here, not quite. Across there came Porik Mannion. Once again, a very commanding figure. He had the misfortune, of course, to kick that ball away right at the very end of the, tipper, of the uh, Kilkenny match. He's playing really well tonight, that's for sure. Nicely down. Owen Connolly getting there first for Tipperary, hammering it into the centre, collected here by... Kevin Cooney again a rash looking shot and Reese Shelley just lets it go harmlessly wide. 
Yeah, good to see Porrick man in back on the wing. Uh, Jerry, you know, real, really solid, very good in the air, fantastic catch there, They're just not using it well enough when they get it up. Reads the game so well. It's necessary because right now Tipperary are trying to advance, stop there. Joseph Cooney in the thick of it, waiting for a support player to come, and that is the captain, Dohi Burke. Got it out as far as Cahill Mannion, and then Mannion, before the block could come in, knocked it away downfield, but to nobody in particular, to two Tipperary players, that's not good. Across it comes again. Brian O'Mara. Through the hands that time of Jake Morris. as an opportunity for Garrod McInerney to go back, has a support player there to help him out. And they try to get it away with Joseph Cooney. Back out towards Dohi Burke. Ooh, risky one across there, but it's a good pass over as far as Porig Mannion. Got there ahead of Seamus Kennedy. Down as far as Evan Nyland. Trying to wrong foot Owen Connolly. Connolly still trying to get the challenge in. Here's Nyland. Connolly's after him. Back out it comes towards Connor Whelan. Nice footwork. Nice turn by Whelan. Nice score by Whelan as well. That's a bit more like it. He's providing the quality in there. Great score, great sidestep, uh, you know, Saul Barrett, and Barrett took the bait, and, uh, you know, full of confidence from his display in, in the Leinster final, so Henry will be happy enough if it's played away on these terms, Dodger, once they're ahead. They're ahead by three. Ronan Glennon, an opportunity to play it forward with a bit more accuracy in that, not much that uh, Nyland could do to win that. It's uh, Alan Tynan who goes back to Forage, takes it. Hit out by Michael Breen in as far as Ronan Maher. Won back, however, by the strongly built Fahey. In towards Kevin Cooney. Fed forward. Whelan again! Stopped this time. It's gone over the crossbar, but there was a goal there for Conor Whelan. And Reese Shelley takes the credit. Well, if the earlier save we said was very good, this was absolutely brilliant. What a ball from Cooney. He did everything right. He, he kind of gave him the eyes, as Brendan Cummins would say, and went across his body. And Shelley just spread himself so far that he got a foot to it and over the bar. Uh, crucial, crucial save. Go away, four points without reply now, Anthony. What's happened to Tipperary? Yeah, it's just to see aimless, I'd say. Liam can't wait for the half time whistle jar to get them down the tunnel and, and you know, get things rejigged and, and fire them up. There's none of the fire that we saw in the earlier rounds in Munster. Uh, in them at the moment. Tip haven't scored for eight minutes in this match. That's a long spell. Michael Breen getting a, a card. Crowds trying to get uh, behind both sets of players. Gary McInerney trying to win this, came out for it, runs loose. In there to try and win it for Tipperary, Connor Stakelham. Take it instead by Joseph Cooney. Darren Morrissey then, back into the inside forward. And what a leap in the air by Conor Whelan! Back out towards Keanon Fahey. This will be a great score if he can make it. He's missed it. It's an eighth wide, but what about that for a huge jump in the air by the man of the match in the Leinster final. Yeah, Whelan is causing a lot, of, a lot of headaches in there at the moment, but they're just not finishing enough. Galway have it again. Good platform around their own half-back line to set opportunities, and they're feeding it down this time. Nicely done from Cannon in as far as Kevin Cooney. Hooked. Goes again. Plenty of Tipperary players are back there to win possession. Michael Breen's got it. Three Galway players are after him. It's a little casual. Tipperary have got to wake up in this match or they're going to be out of the championship. Galway are showing the necessary desire. Their fans are sensing that this team is up for it this afternoon. Yeah, it's your kind of a comedy of errors there, really. Uh, both and Tip eventually give away the line ball, which to be disappointed with because they got control back of the ball. I think Brian O'Mara, that's Whelan's earlier catch, superb, look at the height he goes, so he spoke about the late great Teddy McCarthy lately. Something Absolutely. similar. Something similar. Sean Lennard, a crossover there, a 50-50 ball to try and win it goes for Mannion against Seamus Kennedy, but he couldn't get it under control. Just about one minute remaining in the opening 35. So it'll be a line ball, which Brian O'Mara will take. And has made a marked contribution in every match that he's played so far for Tipperary this year. Well, he plays this one down, but that wasn't the contribution that the forwards were looking for. There's Evan Nyland back in his own left half back position, swinging it up towards Concannon. Knocking it down, 
Whelan was onto it, but so too Barrett got it away. Great, great corner back play. Glennon trying to get to it. So too Ronan Maher. Maher takes it under control here. Down the field he goes, unchallenged. Great piece of defending by Tipperary that time. Now, can they finish the half with a score and give themselves something to build on? Not if Galway have their way. Mark Kyo reaches up, gets there, wins the duel there against Darren Morrissey, and it gets more and more intense. Yeah, Henry Shefflin not overly happy with the decision. Uh, put under in pr intense pressure, Mark Kyo. Uh, brilliant piece of defending below and the goal lined off Carl Barrett to get a hurley 50-50 ball between himself and uh, and Whelan and uh, Ronan Maher came away with it they need something now Tip about 12 minutes now since they got their last score Jason Ford four points so far in the match three of those were from freeze and that one is going inside the right hand upright it's exactly what the Premier County required on the call of half time because now there are three between them So you're summing up of the opening 35, Anthony. Well, uh, if someone had told me beforehand it was going to be 10-7, very near half-time, I'd have been shocked, to be honest, but it's been KG. It's, it's been played, it's sort of a, the middle zone is everything, and if you can get fastball up to the inside dangerous forwards, Galway have just done slightly more of that. The prize is a huge one. The final whistle from John Keenan goes at the end of the opening 35 minutes. So three between them at the break. It hasn't exactly flowed, but it has been intense. Rhys Shelley has made a couple of great saves. And uh, at half-time, with uh, Conor Whelan, the top scorer for Galway, with three points from open play. This is the position, Galway 10 points, to Ferreri 7, back with Joanne and the panel right after this. <laughs> Here's a few home truths for you. In Bantry, they're running things. In between walking things. In Clonmel, they're making pacemakers work. In Fairview, they're making bicycles work. In Waterford, they're growing companies and veggies and hurlers. Dingle has the best after work points. So does Glasnevin and Westport and Dunedee. Limerick has a farm scene. Grange Castle has a film scene. And Trim has a this scene. Only FRS knows these things, because we have people all over Ireland. So if your heart wants home, but your head has more questions, ask us. It's moving in there, and he's got it!
Conor Whelan has been showing quite the bag of tricks here in the Gaelic grounds. Galway, his team are on top, but it's been quite nervy from both sets of teams in this second All-Ireland quarterfinal. The Tribe are on top by 10 points to 7. I wonder why they felt they could have been even more. Brendan Cummins has been a frustrated tip man watching that. You might explain to us why it is that Conor Whelan has come into this game. Well, I think the way Galway have worked the puck out have been really good. And you think about it, both teams have somebody sitting. Cahill Mannion's doing it for Galway. Ronan Mars doing it for Tip. But on the restarts, Galway seem to be able to work their seven defenders against the Tip five forwards better. Gives them a position to play it in from their own 65, which allows them to put the ball in in front of Conor Whelan. Tip have struggled coming the other direction in finding the gap. So the inside forwards and Tip. And Whelan, in fairness to him, he's in, he could have scored three goals. Tip will be happy. There's only three points in it. But once you can get the ball inside, that diagonal ball in they're able to feed off the straps and he spins that one lovely into the breeze coming across him there as well but you can see the platform of where they're delivering the ball in Joanne it's about 60-70 yards to tip goal it's exactly what Conor Whelan wants and to be fair the Tipperary inside backs have done quite well Reece Shelley has been fantastic again you can see the position where the ball's been delivered in it gives him certainty of run now Whelan will be disappointed here big time because he fumbles the ball he was given a glance across the square I think it was Coney inside but lost it again the scrambling Tipperary defence had done really, really well. But eventually the time was going to come, I suppose, when, you know, Galway were going to nearly crack and, and, and get in and get a, take one of these chances. Thankfully, from a tip point of view, it hadn't because of this man, Reese Shelley. Thankfully, Joe didn't have much faith in him before the match. And <laughs> Reese now is just about to get mad the match. I didn't, I didn't so that's good that. as well. But Tipperary were really on the edge there. And Liam Cahill will be absolutely thrilled. There's only three points in this now. I'll dig you out of this one. He did not, not have much faith. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He was just how good he was. He said he yeah. might be successful. But susceptible to a high ball. <laughs> he hasn't had to deal with too many of those. Now, I know you don't think it's all great from a Galway ball-in point of view, a bit of a mixed bag. It's better than what Tip are getting. Have they had to, to live on just a few sparks of quality from out the field? Uh, yeah, I, I think Tip will be really happy to be only three points down at half-time. It, it reminds me a small bit of last year's quarter-final, Galway and Cork, which Cork missed an awful amount in the first half and had chances, goal chances, to put the game to bed. But they have been good in spurts. Um, they have got good scores early on, Alan Tynan here. They just don't seem to be clicking yet. But I'm playing with a big breeze. Like, like Jason Ford hit one of his first frees from inside his own 45 with loads on it. So the breeze is definitely favouring Tip in the first half and it'll be favouring Go in the second. But they're just... They're, I don't know, Galway are working maybe that little bit harder around the middle of the field. And I think... If they keep hitting the diagonal ball, it, it's working. But my worry is that there's only still three points, considering Galway had all the most of the possession in the first half. And, and you did question their defence beforehand. Have they had much of a threat to deal with so far? Yeah, Tip haven't really overly threatened it, but what Galway have done, they've dealt with it really well and, and have restricted Tipperary to only three points from play. They're getting the numbers around, they're, they're, they're touch tight defending. Tip are probably getting slightly frustrated with, you know, mi mishandling uh, some balls, but win an excellent free here. And you can see how much that can mean to a team. And Galway go down the field and get a score from it. Again, Joseph Cooney, who's having a huge uh, impact on this game but again look at the Galway players getting making it tough on tip you know like a wall they're not able to get through and over carry it again that's what Galway need more of you know they'll be thrilled that they haven't allowed Tipperary in for any uh, you know goal opportunity and again brilliant work from McInerney and Dahi Burke and they clear the line um, so they'll be they'll be happy enough how they're defending but Cahill Mannion's playing a huge part in this because he's the extra man back and he's so intelligent when he uses the ball um, so yeah Galway will be happy so far no goals conceded Happy enough, they do lead by three, but the Galway man in studio is very worried about what might be coming down the tracks in the second half.
The Sunday game is taking over your TVs tomorrow because Damien is live from Coke Park for the Talchin Cup semi-finals with Raymond Galligan and Mickey Quinn. That one's from half one on RT2. And then Lee and Peter are in Salt Hill for Goey versus Mayo in the Football Championship preliminary quarterfinal. That one's on RT1 from 2.40. And then Jackie will take you through the whole weekend's action on the Sunday game tomorrow night from half past nine, as always. Now included in that, and also we'll be showing you a little bit later on, are the preliminary quarterfinals in football. We've had two one-point wins. The first one was for Cork against Ross Common, and then Conor McCarthy scored a late, late winner to see Monaghan through against Kildare and what a day it was for the footballers in Monaghan as well because their minors made it through to their first All-Ireland final since 1939 with a victory over Kerry so what a massive day for the people in Monaghan and big day for Cork footballers as well big day for the Clare hurlers but what about Tipperary and Galway you seemed nervous Joe despite the fact that Galway were those three points up but surely is there more in them as well for this second half yeah you'd be hopeful to be more in, in Galway they just need to get their finishing right. I think, yeah, Brendan spoke about tips, scramble defence and getting back, but Galway just need to finish. If they want to win this game, they need to be converting them goal chances because they mightn't get too many more. Now, will the wind help them? We were just talking, it mightn't. They could be going back to that pot shots that we spoke about before in previous games where that doesn't really suit them. So they need to be careful, feed, stay feeding the ball into that full forward line. Now, Gerard O'Connor and Conor Bow are coming on for tip in this second half. What do you make of that, Brendan? Yeah, I'm not surprised. Um, but they, I think the, the same will happen from Tip's point of view this time. Against the breeze, they'll be forced to work the ball. I think the tip full back line will get wider on the puck out when Reese Shelley has it. They'll go sharper. They'll try to get it to their own 65 and then try to, to put it in. But definitely with uh, Bow coming in, there's more legs around the middle. And Gerard O'Connor, his height and size under the puck outs will be a huge key for Tip as well against the breeze if they have to go along. What way do you see this second half going? Is it going to be similar lines to the first? Were there a lot of nerves, a lot of tension? We heard Anthony talk about the fact that there's so much on the line and you can kind of sense it coming from the players. Yeah, because there's no second chance here now and you can understand the, the certain amount of nerves. I know we spoke before the game, but I think you know the impact of the bench now is going to make the difference. Galway will probably make a few changes as well. And I think a goal will, uh, will have a big say in this game. And I think one of the teams are going to get one probably in the first quarter. Yeah, that's the whole thing. We're talking about goals now. I know Galway created loads of them. We saw so few chances even from Tip. Are we expecting goals, all of us, this second half? Well, they're not too sure on the on the goal front. There will be goal opportunities, but because you have Mannion and Padraig Mar, or sorry, Ronan Mar sitting, it just means the whole thing is kind of blocked up. But I think if Tipperary are due to maybe get one or two chances, and as a Tip person, I'd be hoping we'd be able to take them when Galway couldn't, and that'll be maybe the turning point in the game. Imagine only seven points from Tipperary in one half of hurling. Surely we'll have lots more from both sides in the second half. Back to Anthony and Jer. Thank you, Joanne. Yeah, those two changes then. Garrod O'Connor coming on and Connor Bow and the replace the players they replace are Seamus Calden and Mark Kyo. Uh, I think that is a commentary on what happened in the first half as the second half gets underway. Three between them, Galway ahead. It's uh, advantage Galway, but a long, long way to go. We could, we could see Mikey Beavens during the break there when the gold players came out going across to each and every one of them saying, come on, this is it, this is your moment. But right now they're in difficulty back there because Conor Whelan with the mix-up has scored a goal after about 17 seconds of the second half. He's replicating what he did last time in the Leinster final. Terrible defending. Terrible defending, Kyle Barrett doesn't look right to me. Uh, Gerald, in fairness, Whelan is just getting the better of him. Just hooshed him off the ball there and wasn't going to miss again. Uh, buried it to the corner. Great, great start for Galway. Again, Kyle Mannion with the early ball up. What an enormous challenge now being presented to Tipperary by this Galway side. Kevin Cooney trying to win that one against Michael Breen. Breen picks it up there. So 13 seconds, our technicians are telling me, was the uh, time that goal was registered in the second half. One of the fastest goals, I suppose, in this year's championship in a second half anyway. Yes, yeah, John Keenan actually had to throw it in twice because I think the, the ball came back and hit him on the leg. So uh, when he threw it in the second time, it just was hoosed out to Kyle Mannion, who gave in a beautiful floater. Barrett was probably favoured to win it, but Whelan's strength was able to, you know, create a bit of space for himself and then finish superbly. And look at now the space that's there in front of him, one-on-one. -on -one. That's in front of the Tipperary goal. Meanwhile, 
it is Jason Ford looking to try and get one back and he's pulled it away badly seven wides now by Tipperary it's just not going their way but they have a lot of time on their side anxious faces in a crowd of 34,180 in Limerick from the puck out Galway try to get possession again but stopped this time by Ronan Maher and they lose it once again they're all a dither and Nyland's in quickly and this time Nyland has hit it the wrong side of the upright oh yeah and that's, that's another easy chance kind of begging by Nyland standard square walk by Joseph Gooney Lovely. to intercept the ball good puck out straight to Seamus Kennedy fitting it forward here as far as Garrod O'Connor the UL student and Garrod O'Connor O'Con hits this one well and puts it over the crossbar that is a good start by him yeah, great score, Jared. They needed that badly, and yeah, he did really well. Big man, able to win his own ball. And Tiff have it again from that Galway puck out. And hitting this one is Alan Tyne, and scored in the first half. That's a good response. Two points by Tiff to respond to the Galway goal. Yeah, and even at that, Jared, you're thinking that the missed chance of the point by Evan Island. And two big scores then for Tiff, and the Tiff crowd here in the Gaelic grounds ignite. Jack Grealish, a goal scorer in last year's quarter-final match in Thurles against Cork. This time the provider, that ball went down towards Kevin Cooney, but he couldn't get to it. Whelan's back there, Cooney's back there as well, and Whelan this time involved over there. The referee spotted the foul. He's causing enormous problems. Full credit to him when he came into this match as the man who we were talking all about after the Leinster final. His fantastic performance in that, a goal and six. And he does this this afternoon, a goal and three already. Yeah, and in fairness to him, you know, the Leinster final, we questioned maybe was it a good, great move to bring him to the wing. Henry has put him back inside the edge of the square and said, let it up to him often and early. And uh, he's delivering in spades for them at the moment. Nyland with his first point of the second half, and that is his sixth at all. Really good free-taking, he's doing his job. Galway won 11 to nine points ahead. Puck out towards Garrod O'Connor again. He has to be a big, big influence now. Kalman's got off, their big leader for so many years, but the year's just catching up at a 34 years of age. So it's the younger O'Connor who's in there, and Connor Bow as well. This soft three. enough free again there, Jar. You know, it's just Nyland is capable of scoring these ones. And if you, look, he may not know it's a long way back, but I mean, you, you have to stop giving away the cheap freeze. Well, he is a long way back, as you say, Anthony. He's just uh, very close to his own 45 meter line. So the best part of 100 metres, he's dragged it over. It's still in play. Whelan's in there dangerously lurking. Coming out with him is Cahal Barrett. I'll try to hold on to it as well. Didn't like the challenge from Keanu and Fahey. But uh, held his uh, composure. Yeah, he did well. Got on, to, got on to the breaking ball and nice and tidy into himself and, and fouled him by Keanu and Fahey. Free quickly taken following that. Off it goes. Broken down again very neatly here into the hands of Noel McGrath looking to try and play it off to a support player, Jake Morris, the nearest one to him. One back again by Cahal Mannion. What a match he is playing, Cahal Mannion. Big, huge influence in defence back there, winning everything, distributing carefully. Major player. Yeah, he's been massive and uh, he's been the go-to guy as well. Every time they get a chance to go short, they try and get it to him. I think Noel McGrath has picked up a, a yellow there for that over the shoulder, and Noel was a bit incensed himself, he didn't get a free going through. Second yellow card for a Tipperary player, the first went to Michael Breen. It'll be Anna Murphy who will take this free for Galway, just on the edge of the AD. Breen's blowing across the field right now, it would appear. Whelan is the target down there, two Tipperary players against him. And one of them winning it mightily there, and that player is Roland Maher from Thurley Sarsfields. Free taken quickly, no time to delay. Into the hands of Garrod O'Connor, about to be challenged by Dohi Burke. Drops it in, there are two men inside forward line there, Connor Bowes in there as well. Ford was anticipating, never reached him. Garrod McInerney got it out. Clever play there by Joseph Cooney. On it goes once again. Into the hands, however, of the... Full back here, Michael Breen, back at full back at this stage. Played out I as think, far as Noel McGrath. I think they've made that change though. I think Michael Breen has picked up 
uh, Conor Whelan. Uh, that's the way I'm reading it from here. Anyway. And yeah, Conor Barrett has shoved out. Seems to be. There's Brian O'Mara playing it out here as far as Alan Tynan. Got a score a little while ago here. That's going left, however. Not going to get that one. Second wide of the second half by Tip. Tynan has to be content with the two points. He got one in each half. Still a five-point game. Cahal Mannion down into the hands there of Brian Concanon, yet to catch fire in this match. Tipperary safely in control this time. Cahal Barrett, quick look up and tried to measure his clearance in there towards Conor Bow. Flew beyond him, back to collect Garroyd McInerney. Polished performance by Galway so far, doing most of everything right. Down towards Concanon again. Got a little nick to it. Whelan takes control. Wrong footing, Michael Breen, and the shot the wrong side as well, however. And you have to say as well, Gerard, that's one he'd be disappointed with, but, you know, their, their 2017 guard are hurling really well. Garrod McInerney, Dahi, Joseph Cooney, all really playing great stuff and, and really standing up and being leaders around the place. That puck out as far as Seamus Kennedy. Up it goes towards Jason Ford. Again, Galway comfortably in control there. McInerney all the way over. Once again, it's Cahill Mannion. Loads of time. Very little challenge on him. Down it goes towards Kevin Cooney. Can't hold on to it. Out by O'Mara. Takes it back here again. About to be challenged this time by Keanon Fahey, but O'Mara has it once more. Jason Ford collects it well against uh, Garrett McInerney and held up this time. So it'll be a free in. Chance to make it a four-point game. Yeah, I think I think he was entitled to free. He won a great ball, uh, turned Garrod. Yeah, hand in, hand out, but uh, a lot of refs will, will give the forward the advantage in that situation. Ford looking for his first point of the uh, second half. Has to be done. He's got six for the day so far of Tipperary's total of ten. But it's a day in which their forward line has simply not functioned as. Liam Cahill would have been anticipating. No, but hanging in, Joe, that's the key thing for them. They're hanging in, they're only four down, and uh, anything can happen. Sure. Anna Murphy hitting it out, and this is what happens next. It's collected here well by Brian O'Mara as far as Seamus Kennedy. This is a good spell now by Tiferary. They're getting more possession. Tiferary have got every opportunity still, and that is Jake Morris. Morris, main man in attack for them in so many respects. Back to Noel McGrath, beautifully finding Alan Tynan. Tiferary needing something, and Tynan sees that shot flash across the face of the goldmount area. And once again he misses, and a ninth wide by Tiferary. Thought it was a chance. Tight angle and did most things right, but you must hit the target, make the keeper save it. Brilliant ball from Noel McGrath, the spot he was going inside loose. Signs some tip maybe that they can find a way. They need more from maybe Jake Morris with two of the full forward and gone off. Well, they're showing a bit more energy at this stage, but as I say that, that's Keanon Fahey who wins that before the challenge can come in here, gets the shot away, and it's a very good one. Keanon Fahey hasn't been as prominent this year with the championship team, but he's taking his chance here. 112 to 10 points. Fantastic response, sir. You know, just won his own puck out. Broke it on, showed a bit of speed and showed a good finish. Shelley with the clearance. Coming out to win this, Jason Ford. Held on to here by Garrod O'Connor. Very strongly built man. Missed there initially by Tynan, but Noel McGrath blocked down well by Joseph Cooney. Very good block by Joseph, and here he is again with the clearance. All the way back down there into that goal area. Shelley does well, last line of defence, gets it away, gets it forward to Connor Bow, who's come away from the full forward position where he had started the second half. Played it in here to Owen Connolly, trying to link up with Garrod O'Connor, pass short and intercepted by Dohi. Burke comes back out again to Ronan Glennon, Glennon down to a two-man inside forward line. Winning the race for that there initially was Cahal Barrett, but under a lot of pressure from Connor Whelan. And that has been quite a duel. That ball ends up going out over the end line, but off the defender's body, and it's got to be a 65, the game's first. Yeah, that's the manager's dream, really. I mean, he'd no right to get a 65 out of that. 
but he wouldn't he wouldn't give up the battle and uh, huge huge one now if it scored because uh, you know tip were in possession coming up the field just seemed all to be too slow there wasn't enough people inside uh, and it broke down and like he just wouldn't give it up and now chance for Nyland uh, to push it out to a six point game Henry Shefflin uh, Anthony really has got a response from Galway this afternoon that Leinster final defeat was a bitter pill for him to swallow this match you know, is of huge importance for Henry and for Galway. And that was the question, Jerry. I mean, could they lift themselves in the two weeks after just such a bitter defeat? But you'd have to remember they hurled really well in that second half. Sure. Looking for his seventh point of the game is Nyland. It comes down off the post. Shelley gets there, just about ahead of Connor Whelan. And Tipperary are still just five behind. Michael Breen's long delivery downfield. Bow on the ground, appealing. Referee says play on. Joseph Cooney once again, steady as ever. Lost his hurley, gives it in there towards Sean Linan. In as far as Dohi Burke, and Burke, who scored a vital goal in the match in Kirk Park against Dublin, has got a point here. They love it. Yeah, that's like two scores as well coming from that man. He's loved by the supporters. Great work by uh, Joseph Cooney, Sean Linan, and a, a, a raker from, from Dohi from his own half back line. That's collected well here by Kianon Fahi from that uh, puck out by Tipperary. They're moving smartly again. Galway, they've lifted the tempo, gave Tip a few chances, but now they're back, and it's Joseph Cooney hammering this one, but uh, away rather badly to the left-hand side, and that'll make it 11 wide so far. Still ahead, though, six in front. And that's 13 minutes into the second half. Well caught again. Once again, Dohi Burke, Linan. Now as far as Kianon Fahi, raiding once more. Another pot shot, and this one is well rewarded. A second point by Kianon Fahi, and this is 13th championship game. And now it's 114 to 10 points. Yeah, really, really hurt him with confidence. You know, sometimes as I watched him, you know the potential is there. Big man, but there are two fantastic scores now. One after right, one after left, and Tom Monaghan now brought in to add extra legs around that middle where they've, they've won midfield, which Tip have been very good in all year. Tip come again with Carl Barrett. And that shot by Barrett hangs in the air there. One handed away initially. Tipperary still trying to see if there's possibilities. Jason Ford on his hands and knees away in the end by Carl Mannion out over the sideline. It's a Tipperary team that in recent weeks, of course, lost to Waterford and uh, then had that facile win against Offaly. And just wondering how that performance against Offaly and that match in the preliminary quarterfinals did them any good whatsoever. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's probably the problem with that as well. You think it's nice, you get a, a blowout and you, but you arrive here into a kind of a dogfight. Uh, a real tough, tough game. I think Johnny Ryan has come on for, for a tip there today. Johnny Ryan comes on in place of Conor Stakelham. And this effort here has gone to the left. Yet another missed opportunity. Galway fucking it out through Anna Murphy. Cahal Mannion again. The provider reaching up was Breen, anticipating was Whelan that he wouldn't be able to clear it properly. And Connor Whelan, such a crafty, clever corner forward, has got a goal and four from open play, and he could have a couple of more goals. Yeah, he could have gone in with that. Brank Cannon, Brank and Cannon was given out to him, but if you're Henry Sheff, then you're saying put that over all day long, stretch it out. Their backs look so comfortable. Look at the space again here. I've never seen Tip as flat in this season. They're just totally flat and devoid of energy at the moment. Galway with a goal and five already in the second half. Tip with just three points in 15, 16 minutes of play. This time it's Cahal Barrett who wins that duel there against Brian Concanon. To Seamus Kennedy. Dan McCormack now. Can Tip stay in the championship? They've got to win here. Back it comes as far as Ronan Maher. He's going to give it a go. And he's got a white flag. Roman Maher giving leadership, getting that score, keeping them just about in touch. Yeah, great score, and that's they're probably relying on that sort of stuff at the moment. Kevin Cooney out of the sideline, hammering it away, but uh, not a particularly good effort. 
And I don't know how fit he is. Uh, I know he's had a few niggles all year, but surely you'd be thinking it's John McGrath time to make something happen. You know, got a goal against Offaly May too. Surely we'd see we see the Lockmore man appearing at some stage. This year so far, I think he's been used kind of in the last five or six minutes of games and always produced something. But it's Henry Shefflin's day so far. His team doing well. Pressure being applied now from Garrod O'Connor. Can Tiff rescue themselves yet in this match? Jason Ford eases into the shot and puts it over the crossbar. That's two in a row now by Tipperary, and that is a little better. Back to a six-point difference again. Yeah, and well done, Garrod O'Connor. He has certainly made an impact, uh, won that ball, popped it off to Jason on the, on the loop, sort of, and uh, an easy score. They have to keep chipping away. You know, we've seen in Hurland, there's probably 20 long minutes and a bit with it uh, to go or so. Uh, they just have to stay chipping away. Cahal Mannion still chipping away. Tipping it down towards Brian Concanon. Connor Whelan again across there. He's uh, having a field day once again. Pass back wasn't the greatest. Galway might still win it. Ronan Maher puts in a determined challenge on his hands and knees. Hots up a little bit. End result is going to be a free anyway. Downfield for Tipperary. And there is the man you've been talking about, John McGrath. Coming on in place of Noel, his brother. Yeah, and that's probably something about bringing on John, but you'd like Noel just, you know, maybe the heat and everything just got him a little bit today. It wasn't as effective as normal. Ronan Maher with the free. Tipperary needing scores. Galway trying to deny them. Good take here by Connor Bow. Hammers it into the ground. Tries to keep it away from the Galway player. Initially, Darren Morrissey, then Dohi Burke. Galway got it out here. And the raiding Kevin Cooney once again. Down he goes, getting away from Brian O'Mara. Firing it in there, into the inside forward like a Brian Kincana, but he couldn't get to it because Cole Barrett, a primary possession, plays it forward. Opportunity to build again for Tipperary. They're in a hurry. Owen Connolly. All the way across towards Jake Morris. Hasn't scored in the game. The man's so often depended upon to deliver for Tipperary. And this time he's put it wide. Yeah, during that, the, the groans around tip, I'd say, it'll be, it'll be felt here in the getting groans because, you know, Jake Morris, beautiful cross me, but fall, fall by Green and did everything right out in front and just pulled the shot so unlike his form all year. Connor Cooney on. Brian Concannon off. During half-time, by the way, we had the New York minor hurlers out here on the field. They were introduced to the crowd. They play against Clare in Quilty on Tuesday night. I'm sure that'll be a lot of fun. Right now, it's Galway who are having the fun, and Tipperary are trying to edge back into contention in a meaningful fashion. Owen Connolly ready to take the sideline ball. Knocking it back here as far as Michael Breen. Into the hands of Jason Ford. Swinging at it, but swinging at it under a little bit of pressure. Too many mistakes, too many wides. 12 in all by Tipperary, 12 by Galway as well. And here is Conor Cooney. Just in. Needs a few more minutes, I think, to sharpen up because that's Galway's 13th miss. Nicely taken in. Garrod O'Connor again. Losing it back to Connor Cooney and Cooney this time unable to find the target, but Reese Shelley does well. Racing for it across over there is Cahal Mannion slipping it back forward by Darren Morrissey. Dohi Burke then again played short. Lack of quality at times in this match. Reese Shelley, plenty of tension. Jake Morris now getting out there. That's a bit more like it from Morris against Grealish initially. Then nicely forward. O'Connor back here again to Morris. Darting forward. Leaves it behind. Plenty of support available in there. Johnny Ryan. And that shot in the end goes over the crossbar. And Johnny Ryan has scored. First point since coming on. And it's 115 to 13. Back to five. And it took a fair bit of perseverance because... Jake Morris is dispossessed twice, Gerard O'Connor once, uh, Johnny Ryan said, just said, I'm going through, and 
they're roaring at each other now, trying to drive each other on and lift it for one last push to see if they can make that last four. There's still a lot of time left in this All-Ireland quarter-final. Anna Murphy going very, very long. Collected at the back there by Dan McCormack. Able to set something up for Ronan Maher. Hit up into the corner to Jake Morris. Got out there well against Garrod McInerney. McInerney fouls him, free in. Chance to make it a four-point game. Tip not dead and buried just yet. No, and, and Morris has shown the last few times now, you know, he wasn't in the game. I kind of questioned when two of the full forward line were gone that they needed him and he has really stepped it up. He's got in front of Gerard McInerney now on three occasions and another free in. And these are crucial minutes now. Jason Ford. This has to go over. It does. Eight for him. Out of Tipperary's 14 points so far. As you can see, we're in the 58th minute. The decibel level rises. Liam Cahill tries to inspire his team. Michael Breen tries to win that ball over there against Conor Whelan. That hasn't been easy. And Breen did get a touch. It's gone out of her, the sideline. Line ball. What a determined approach that was by the man from Ballina and Gabby Tipperary. Yeah, he has looked more comfortable on Whelan. And, and like from since then, Galway have brought Whelan a little bit further out from goal. And I think Liam Cahill will be happy enough with that. Meanwhile, Barrett is back there. Cahill Barrett picking up Kevin Cooney, who's at full forward. Keanon Fahey couldn't hold on to it. He's going back to try and make sure of it, however. That's hand pass by Tom Monaghan, first touch since coming on. And it goes towards Sean Lennon, trying his shot. Looking to try and take it further away from Tip's grasp, but he's put it wide. 14 wide by Galway. A four-point game. This level, you expect to be scoring those ones, Sterk. Henry, you can sense the frustration there, leaving tip of the game. That's exactly it. John McGrath trying to get to this one, and John McGrath deemed to have fouled the cornerback, Darren Morrissey, the Sarsfields man. He's feeling the pressure of that man there. Lots and lots of Tipperary fans are as well. Yeah, yeah. He did, he did, yeah, he put the hand across him and pulled him right, and all the MK has incensed down there, but he did look a free the replay. Good call by John Keenan. It's uh, nearly nine minutes now since Galway scored the team that were comfortably in front of this quarter-final. Cahill Mannion ready to hit the free. Towards Fahey, comes back out towards John McGrath, couldn't take it. Back from Nyland as far as Dohi Breen stepped away from trouble. Then gave it back to... Tom Monaghan, and Monaghan looks at his handiwork, the umpires are right behind it and see that the substitute, Tom Monaghan, who's programmed to start, has come in and has scored an important score, five again the margin. As you said, there are nine minutes without score, they needed something badly, Monaghan provides it. Owen Connolly, raiding again, about to be challenged by Evan Nyland, and he took too many steps, he was making his mind up how to hit it and when to hit it, Nyland nipped in, did his job. Yeah, just Stone Connolly just hesitated, it looked up, I'd say, didn't see much happening, and then probably tried to take it on and did take too many steps. He needed a rear-view mirror, he didn't have one. It's going to be a free for uh, Evan Nyland, or rather for uh, Dohi Burke. Dohi has been a, a superb captain, but in the end they decide to give it to Nyland. It took some of the Tipperary fans now, I think, are getting a bit edgy feeling. Goal, we're taking too much time over this. I think Sean Stack actually just moved it up a bit to uh, maybe where the free was, so, uh, or else there was some bit of the centre something that would have went forward, and that's why Nyland is hitting it. Nyland got five points in the first half and another in the, in the uh, second, so looking for point number seven, and that one has gone away to the right. Plenty to work on if they get to the semi-final goal, well, because they've hit 15 wides from the puck out. It reaches Owen Connolly, slips forward to Dan McCormack. McCormack looking to try and set up the next score for Tipperary. Every attack now so crucial at this late stage in the All-Ireland quarterfinals. Seamus Kennedy coming. Kennedy looking to score, and he's done it. First of the day by Seamus Kennedy, very much a utility player who can play anywhere around the middle third, and now it's a four-point difference once again. And coming in at this stage for Galway, 
Jason Flynn. He's come for Kevin Cooney, I think, who had a very effective game. Might have scored all that much, but was effective. And Flynn knows the legs, and you know, if he gets a chance, he's a good man to nail, nail any half chance. You're a very, very accurate player. Sure is. Garrod McInerney having taken the short puck out and then being hooped really well by Jake Morris. The shot by Connor Bow up into the air, raiding Tipperary players. It's a goal! Tipperary are back in it again, and John McGrath has done it. McGrath gets his 15th ever championship goal. What a critical time. It's a one point game. Oh, yeah, like uh, the squeaky bum time now because. You know, just Jason Ford wouldn't keep up on a miss hit for a point. Uh, he just chased it in, broke it, and McGrath, fantastic old style skillger, whipped on it, no saving it. Great, great goal. Who's going to win it now? There's usually just a point between these teams when they meet in the championship. Dohi Burke rocked by that, raiding, lo losing possession, leaving it behind. Michael Breen picking it up, trying to. Jason Flynn across there for Galway, just in the match. Trying to set up a scoring opportunity all the way across towards Keanon Fahey, setting up Monaghan. An important shot, and Tom Monaghan has got a second point, and Galway are into a two point lead once again. Yeah, great contribution by Monaghan, great contribution by Flynn, uh, winning the dirty ball at the far side, get the head open, and a long crossfield ball, and a great score by Monaghan. Into the last seven minutes of the 70, plus the usual few minutes after that of additional time. Up it goes to the goal scorer again, John McGrath, taken down, free in. Chance once again for Tipperary to make it a one-pointer. Gets edgy. This, the build-up again to that goal. The foul, rather. Yeah, there's two arms around him by Sean Lennon, I suppose, and John using all his experience, too. Yeah, and here's the goal, well, what a belt. No, just waited for it. A lot of lads would have gone down over that ball, wouldn't they? First time with. Once again, the pressure is on Jason Ford. And once again, he withstands that pressure. Admirable work, as ever, by the player from Silvermines. Galway now making another change. And coming on for them is Finton Burke, number 18. Going off is Garroyd McInerney. Yeah, this is going to be in a rejig. I'd say, say Park Mannion is going back to full back now. Finton is taking up his usual. Uh, left half back. I just felt Garro the legs were wilting a bit. Jack Morris was getting on top, so Henry probably just taking action there to say we need a fresh pair of legs in there. Well, earlier on we saw Seamus Calvin go off at half time. Now the man who was marking him earlier on in the game, Garro McInerney, is making way as well. We're down to the last six or seven minutes. A one point game in Limerick in the All Ireland quarter final. Keonan Fahey plays it off to. Evan Nyland, Nyland shoots, and Nyland has scored! One from play, a seventh in all by Evan Nyland, 118 to 116. Brilliant score, Ger Fahey really, you know, again, puck out target for Anna Murphy, must be a dream to have him out there, just touches it down, Nyland, great finish. Now we're seeing the real quality from these two teams. Up towards Garrod O'Connor again, couldn't take it. Instead, it's Sean Lennon back there for Galway, challenged strongly by Seamus Kennedy. Under pressure, there is Lennon once more. Two men against him, almost uh, at risk of holding on to it, but he got the decision his way, pumped up, as you'd imagine. So close now to getting to a semi-final at Croke Park in two weeks' time. Yeah, they're, they're incensed that he was sort of barging with the ball on the sideline. Very hard one for John Keenan to call. Uh, Mikey Beavins and Liam Cahill not happy at all with that decision. Well, the two points down. And it could be worse because of the alarming gap here because Evan Nyland wasn't marked and he should have made more of that. That is a bad miss by his high standards. Oh, yeah, you'd be saying what are the tip defence doing, leaving him in that space, and then he misses after scoring a, an unbelievable score just played it. Seamus Kennedy from the Tiferary puck out, finds it again, and Seamus Kennedy drills it over the crossbar, his second of the second half. Look at the scoreboard now, 118 to 117, 50 or 66 minutes are gone. Great score, Kennedy, you know, loose from the puck out, one look over the bar. Lenan for Galway, down towards Conor Whelan. 
looking to add to the goal in four that he has scored already, but that time the right on this near side last year's all Ireland hurling final referee follow the line, says it went off Whelan, it's going to be a Tipperary line ball, chance for them to build an attack and possibly set themselves up, and uh, one of the officials gets himself a yellow card. It's a tight codger, whether it was. You can say one thing for sure that Mikey Breen has done a lot better on Conor Whelan than anybody else. Ronan Maher cuts it up brilliantly. There to win, but there to be won by the Galway defence. They've been superb. Back it comes to Tom Monaghan once again. Down along here as far as Evan Nyland. Elusive, quick, sharp, into space, but to nobody in particular. Reese Shelley able to win the race here. 67 minutes on the clock, three to go of the 70. That's risky, right across his 20-meter line there. As far as Cahal Barrett, who reacted quickly, got there ahead of Keonan Fahey, steadies himself, but then almost gives it away, and Galway have the chance of picking it up through Cahal Barrett. That was terrible defending. Here it goes to Keonan Fahey. Well saved by Rhys Shelley. Oh, dear. They almost committed a real crime at the back there by giving possession to Galway and giving him a chance of scoring. Joseph Cooney just might, he hasn't. 16 wides instead. Some drama, some drama. Keenan uh, Fahey must have felt he was, you know, it was going to be a, a definite goal there for him, and they did a lot of messing at the back. Doesn't take the chance and, and leaves tip right in it, and Joseph Cooney drives it wide in at the end of the move. Some fantastic goalkeeping by Rhys Shelley. Well, there's still time, 68 minutes on the clock. Joseph Cooney is being attended to. And they want to get him back into the action as quick as possible. They use four of their possible five subs. They don't want to lose Joseph. He's one of their mainstays. Liam Cahill surely believes it is still possible. Remember, there could be extra time. Rhys Shelley. Can Tipperary draw level? Can Galway hold them out? Winning it back there was Finton Burke. He's fouled. Free out for Galway. Galway by the minimum in the 69th minute. Yeah, Finton really clever there. He, he, you know, he knew the tackle was on him, so he, he kind of threw Conor, Conor Bow over his head, I think it was Conor Bow. Yeah. Uh, and he gets a, a massive relief and free out. Cotter will take it. Younger of the two Mannion brothers who've played their part. But will it be a, a winning part? There'll be three minutes of additional time added on at the end of the 70s. We've got about four minutes left of this contest. And there was a chop down there by Barrett. It's got to be a free in. Chance for Galway to have a two-point lead again, heading into the concluding stages of this match. That's the chop down there, penalised by the referee. Yeah, and once you miss the ball, Jarrett, I suppose it is a chop. It, it goes on to Hurley. I'm not so sure if Evan Nyland was going to control it, but he had flicked it ahead of himself. And once the hurley meets the hurley, it's always called. He got seven points already in the match. The last one from open play, this one from a free. Nyland on form. Galway ahead by two, heading into stoppage time. 119 to 170. Reese Shelley ready to puck it out. Galway need to deny Tipperary possession, and they're doing that. Back there helping out Connor Cooney, disappointed not to have started today, no doubt. Tip needing to defend, but it's back once again with Tom Mollahan. He's got a couple of points already since coming on. He is absolutely hot. Tom Monaghan from Crockwell, the 26-year-old, gets a third point and puts three between these teams in the All-Ireland quarter-final. Yeah, the Crockwell man has made some contribution <laughs> since he came on. I think three shots at the goal, three points, and uh, that was real. That was one that was just so badly wanted. Came out of nothing really. A, a ball that was being scrapped for someone flicked it out to him, and, and he great score off his left. Jack Ryan has come on, number 24 for. Tipperary in place of Alan Tynan, who got two points but is tiring. Tip need a goal, otherwise their championship, I think, is probably over. They're looking for a free, they're looking for anything, they're getting nothing, and Joseph Cooney moves forward again, linking up with Nyland, giving it to Connor Whelan, Whelan wallops it, 
I think this stage is more in hope than expectation that it will actually result in a score for Galway. It is, in fact, uh, their 18th wide. Yeah, Jason Watson. Flynn was just worn for him to hit the ball down the line and he just hit it away, really, and that's given Tip the puck out. It'll be a nervous finish for Galway. Tip trying to make something of it, playing on the referee, saying to Owen Connolly, back you come, not giving an advantage. 90 seconds only remaining. Yeah, cynical, cynical free, George Hanlon, and just knew Conor Bow was getting away from him. He just rugby tackled him down, really. No need for a black uh, card in hurling, Anthony? Well, sure, so far out there, I mean, it really couldn't be a black card, I don't think. If it were football. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lenan getting the card anyway. Jason Ford ready to hit this, he's got nine. And that's a smashing score, but I think it's too little at this stage, unless in the last minute Tiff can somehow conjure up a goal. More changes, 25 Liam Collins comes on, off goes Ginnon Fahey. Had a good game, Fahey, two good scores, and from Ardrahan. Yeah, made a big contribution, Jeremy will be disappointed not to finish the goal, but oh, had a very good game, came of age really today. Galway holding on to it, once again it is that man, Conor Cooney, inside intended for Collins, to Ferrari on, at sixes and sevens, Collins has it, the last of their subs to come on. Tip managed to win it back eventually with Ronan Maher here, challenged, trying to get it out to Dan McCormick, fouled, free in. Three minutes has now been played and the referee will give the free and give Tipperary a chance, surely, of somehow rescuing this game. 120 to 118. Some second half, it really has been a much better quality. Yeah, certainly 20 minutes, Jerry, ex excellent stuff, real excitement. Reece Shelley, I'd say, to give this absolutely everything and hope. Shelley launching it. Tip needing to get a goal. Galway needing to deny them. Sean Lennon has it. The referee blows the whistle. Galway beat Tipperary. And Galway will be in the All-Ireland semi-final where they will be beating Limerick in two weeks' time. Yeah, Two huge, points to margin. Huge scenes of the like below us here. And Henry on his way down to, to commiserate with Liam Cahill. And, you know, they're just the relief from Galway. They had a lot. They deserve to win it, really, I think, or, with what they missed and that. But, like, still, sometimes these games, when they're that tight, anything can happen. And Tip never give up the fight. They, they just seem to lack a bit of energy. But they fought and fought and fought. And John McGrath's goal gave them the chance to win it. But... Uh, the Galway deserved winners and into the semi-final and repeat of last year, unbelievably. Well, the full-time score here in uh, Limerick, it reads Galway 120, Tipperary 180. So, Anthony, uh, give us an idea of uh, who impressed you today in particular. Overall, in Galway, their defence was very strong. Yeah, I see I see Conor Whelan making his way over there towards the men of the match award, so I'd say he, he's probably getting that. I, I really thought Cahill Mannion ran the match in lots of ways. He was he was left loose at the back, and he's too good a player to be left loose, really, Jerry, in that he will punish you with the quality of ball. And I did think, you know, in that spell before half-time, they didn't put it on the scoreboard, but Whelan and Kevin Cooney had him in sixes and sevens when they were two on two in there. So, there it is, it's Galway who have emerged victorious by two points there in the semi-final, Joanne. Ger and Anthony, thank you very much for that. It was nervy at times, it was scrappy at times, it got very, very exciting towards the end. Joe Canning watching this did not enjoy a lot of that, but you enjoyed the final result. How do you feel about where Galway are now? Same semi-final lineup as we had last year. Yeah, it's a massive win. I, as, as you said, I was like, when they got the goal and they brought it back to a point, I was like deja vu all again and even that last free in there but in fairness to the guys a lot of questions is asked of this Galway group and in fairness to them they got the result and that's what it was all about just getting over the line and uh, yeah Limerick in two weeks. Limerick in two weeks from a, a temporary point of view Brendan obviously disappointing they, they went in here it seemed filled with confidence especially after that record win did they get out fought did they get out thought what happened? 
I just think that it's a little bit similar to the, the Watford game where Billy Nolan, I suppose, ran the game. It was Cahill Mannion today who ran the game and they really stifled and suffocated the Tipperary attack. Never really got goal chances, were feeding off of scraps. And, you know, to be fair to Galway, they had, they had everything set up perfect, like the way everybody set deep. McInerney and Dahi Burke, you know, they were big and strong and they had the outlet ball then at Conor Whelan. Tip never really got the ball within 50 yards of our inside forwards to give that proper delivery in, we'll say. It was always long and always struggling and, find, and trying to find a way. But credit to the Tipperary lads, they hung in there, they hung in there and near the finish there, if they could have got a flick on that last ball, God, we were robbed again. But at the same time, you know, it's a huge disappointment for Tipperary, there's no doubt about that. But plenty of green shoots and a lot of great work after done by Liam, but that's a sore one tonight. Uh, the very fact that Tip did hang in there and did threaten to come back, does that kind of back up what Joe was saying there? How important it was for Galway to be able to then respond to that and hold on in the end? Yeah, and I think that's what Galway will be really happy with, how they responded to that goal. And the few changes they made was crucial. Tom Monaghan came on, got three super points. Keenan Fahey got two brilliant points. Dahi Burke stood up. So I think Galway's leaders stood up when when they, when they needed it most today and none more so than Conor Whelan as well up in the, in the attack. His goal just after half time was the crucial one for me. Yeah, Anthony's already given it away, Joe, but why don't you confirm <laughs> who the man of the match is? Yeah, the one-trick pony, Conor Whelan. Uh, yeah, he got, in the, especially in the first half, when Galway needed a few scores he was tormenting everybody in there like Cahill Barrett got moved off him. not too many players get moved off uh, or Cahill Barrett gets moved off so that just shows the effect he was having on the tip inside backline now, it was a difficult interview for Damien O'Mara last time Conor Whelan got man of the match Damien Lawler should have a better time this time round Thank you very much, Joanne. Kieran Fahey from Borgash Energy is here to present Connor with his Man of the Match award. Well done, Connor. Thank you, Kieran. Connor, that was hard work in the end, but did you feel you were the better team throughout? Ah, look, it's always it's always a very good spectacle between between the two of our teams. Uh, you know, we've we've massive massive respect for Tip, and uh, you know, we knew it'd be a dogfight. Um, you know, missed a couple of chances in the first half. I was probably guilty of, of a few of those, but look, we just knew that if we if we dug in, and you know, it's. It's something I said after the after Linzer final was, I knew the I knew the character in this group and uh, you know look at our our backs were against the wall and uh, you know I think a lot of people didn't think that we'd step up but look at it, I've massive belief in this group and uh, look at we'll we'll just ourselves down again for two makes a huge test but look at we'll just take it. What would have been a turning point for you after the Leinster final? Because it was a fairly horrendous way to lose the game. But what turned the corner for you guys when you went back training? Do you think? Ah, uh, look at I think perspective is everything. Look at obviously, there's three competitions every year. There's the league, uh, the Leinster Championship, and the All Ireland series. And uh, you know I think perspective is everything. We lost, but if it was during COVID, we'd have been out. So look at it. We knew we had another chance, and uh, we knew this this day was a huge test for us. And uh, you know it's great to see all the fans here and family and all that. And that's that's the whole thing's about. Connor, I know you're a, an ultimate team player and you've seen good days and you've seen bad days, but you're in the form of your life. Have you done anything different this year in terms of your, your own approach? Ah, no, look, I think we're just working very, very hard as a team. I think that's what Henry demands of us. And, uh, you know, I don't think it's about the scores, right? And I think at the end of the day, once you get the win, we're all happy and we just march on. And just when you're playing an inside forward line, is it a case of get the ball into us as quick as you can when you know that today is going to be your day? Ah, look, I think uh, different games ask for different things. Uh, teams set up differently and stuff like that and I think you know we bring a lot of variability and we've lads that can shoot from out the field as well so look at we'll take it today this is for the boys. Borgash Energy Man of the Match well done Connor.